And I could stop right there and say, that is why Jesus matters, nothing else, but there's more. <laughs> because Jesus, if Jesus is Lord, then that means that we have a loving Father in heaven. That God isn't just some distant deity that has made us and left us, but that if Jesus is Lord, then we have a Father, Abba in heaven, who is willing to do anything to love us and bring him back, bring us back to himself. Hey everyone, my name is Adam Cross and I am an associate marriage and family therapist and a Catholic youth minister out in Southern California. And today I want to talk to you about why Jesus matters. So one of my favorite books is called Be a Man, Becoming the Man God Made You to Be by Father Larry Richards. And Father Larry Richards has, um, has a great approach to talking to men. And actually the first lines of the book are, you are going to die. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's a pretty morbid start to a book, but it's so, it's so perfect to think about is the fact that you are going to die. And today we want to talk about why Jesus matters. And that might sound kind of like a fear mongering approach, but it's not. The truth is, is that we all will die. There's going to be a point where our hearts stop and that can be a really scary reality. And the question is, then what? Like, we are going to die. There's the Latin phrase, memento mori, right? To remember death, that death waits for all of us. So then what? What happens after death? In modern society, the name of Jesus is thrown around like whatever. And we kind of take for granted the Christian faith because we live in a post-Christian society. So this question of why Jesus matters is an important one to look at. And here's a few reasons. The first one is that we're going to die. And we all have to answer that question of what happens after we die. And C.S. Lewis said that Jesus is either Lord of the universe, he's either a raging lunatic or a liar. And it's this famous kind of proposition that Jesus is either Lord, lunatic, or liar. What does that mean? Jesus, in his public ministry, made claims that were very controversial at the time. He proclaimed that he and the Father were one. And even to call God the Father back then was very controversial. He made the claims that he was one with God. Just to think about that in context, for a guy to say, hey, I am one with God, I am God, then he couldn't have been just a nice dude. He couldn't have been just like a great teacher or a good prophet. The only options really are, if Jesus is claiming that he was God, was that he is actually God, or he knew he wasn't God and he was lying, or that he wasn't actually God, but he thought he was God, which means he's a lunatic. So those are the options, because if a man claims to be God and he's not God, well, that, he's not a good person. He can't be a nice, nice guy or he can't be just a good teacher or even a revolutionary. He either has to be Lord, lunatic, or liar. And so a lot of the arguments for Jesus being a lunatic and a liar don't really satisfy. They don't really add up. I mean, you think about if Jesus was a liar, if he was just a really good con man and the best con man in all of history, you have to wonder, why were his best friends willing to suffer and die brutal deaths for him? To be crucified upside down for a lie. Um, to be skinned alive, right, for a lie. And Jesus himself to be tortured and crucified. And not once say, you know, I, I was lying. That so many people that were really close to him stood by him to his death and died with him. Not many people are willing to be tortured brutally and die for a lie. The other option is he's crazy. And you kind of have that same, same question. If he was crazy and he thought he was God, would, would all of his closest family and friends who knew, hey, um, you're, you, you got some screws loose, would they follow him to his death and do his bidding? Those two arguments don't really add up of him being a lunatic and a liar. You also have the countless miracles that play into account. And even the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that after he died, uh, three days later, he's resurrected and he appeared to many, many witnesses and did many things after his resurrection. And people were willing to die years and years later for him. 
um, not even immediately, but years after that, as old men, again, being tortured and killed. So there's a lot of reasons why the, the liar and the lunatic option don't really add up. So the question is, what does it mean if Jesus actually is Lord? What does that mean? Like if Jesus is actually God, if Jesus is actually king of the universe, then what does that mean for you and me? And that's a big question. Because first thing it means is that Jesus, if he is Lord and he is who he says he is, then that means he conquered death. That means he conquered death, he's the savior of the world, and that he's conquered and been victorious over death for you. For you specifically. So that you could live forever with him. That you could be in true communion and be in true peace and love with him forever. And I could stop right there and say, that is why Jesus matters, nothing else, but there's more. <laughs> Because Jesus, if Jesus is Lord, then that means that we have a loving Father in heaven. That God isn't just some distant deity that has made us and left us, but that if Jesus is Lord, then we have a Father, Abba in heaven, who is willing to do anything to love us and bring him back, bring us back to himself. Like even looking at the story of Adam and Eve, like the second Adam and Eve fell into sin, God's plan was to redeem them to bring them back to himself, to full communion with him. If you think about it, if you have a child, right? If you have a son or a daughter, imagine how much would you have to love somebody else? How much, how much love would be necessary to sacrifice your only son or daughter for someone else or for a group of people? And yet the words we hear in scripture are powerful that God our Heavenly Father gave up his son for us and not only that but the son who was faithful to the father who loved the father selflessly was willing to give himself up for the father and for us if Jesus is Lord then everything matters and you matter and everything we do matters because that means that our lives are not just random or or accidental but that means that our lives have value because if jesus died for us so that we might have life then that means our life matters jesus reveals to us that god as a trinity as a relationship itself longs to have a relationship with you and with me and god intimately desires to be with us to know us to talk with us in prayer and to to give himself to us through the sacraments and through the countless blessings that he pours out, that we have a heavenly father, we have a personal God, and we have a savior that has conquered death, that what might seem scary and what, what might be suffering is now glorified and turned into something great in the name of God. If Jesus matters because he has conquered this world and he has conquered suffering and death for you so that you might be with him, and that means that you can talk to him anytime and that you can run to him in the sacraments and that you, he is there for you to be with you. If Jesus matters, if Jesus is Lord, then everything changes. Our thoughts, our feelings, our actions, our relationships, everything matters. So the truth of it is we're all going to die. Memento mori, we will face death. And the question we all must ask and answer is what happens next. Jesus can't be just a good guy because he claimed he was God. And the options for us are that he was either Lord, he was either lunatic, or he was a liar. And if Jesus is Lord, then that means we have a God who cares for us, that loves us, who would do anything for us. And he's longing for you to know just how much he matters to you too. So thank you for watching. Feel free to comment, share this video, give it a like, um, subscribe below. Uh, feel free to check out my website as well if you have any questions about therapy or ministry or if you just want to get in touch with me at all. So thanks again and God bless.